Mariam with Golgi, so you are here as the first one. Please, could you share uh, the screen? Hello, uh, yes, sure, but actually I don't know how can I do it. So could you please tell me? Uh, OK, I will try it. Mm -hmm. So. Now I'm sharing the screen, so uh, if you would like to share the screen, just click on uh, this button. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not a cross there, it's an arrow. So once you are sharing, you will see there a cross. Just click on that and then you will share the screen. Okay, I'm going to try it. Okay, it's Maybe someone else can also try it just to share the screen and we will be the first one you will to start to present this. Uh, it's a usual problem for some students to operate teams. So actually I tried it, but uh, it doesn't work for me like I don't know why. Uh, I would like to ask Eva. Eva, please could you try to share the screen and Mariam, we will try it later. Uh, Mariam, you can try to send me your presentation. Just send me as a file. Maybe yeah, it's free. Free. yeah, it's maybe. Mm -hmm. So Eva, are you there? Okay, something else. Uh, who yes, is ready? To, I mean, okay, I'm, Eva, please. Who I'm trying to, to make it make it work. Uh, if I put. Uh -huh. um, uh, on the top, there is a top part of Teams. Uh, here is the. It's the on the right on the left side from the red button. Just to leave. Uh, yeah, you are you are successful. Great. I'm successful? Okay. Great. I see it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, okay, you have four slides. Okay, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, I expect just one slide, but it doesn't matter. Okay, you can try. Try. There are many pictures. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so I have a presentation about the smooth endoplasmic uh, reticulum. Uh, so. When we'll talk about the rough endoplasmatic reticulum, we'll find out that the rough is closer to the nucleus. Uh, the smooth is more distant from the nucleus. It's uh, also a network of tubular membranous structures. And but in comparison to the rough endoplasmat, uh, endoplasmatic reticulum, it has no ribosomes, so it doesn't take uh, part in the proteosynthesis. Uh, in comparison, it takes or its uh, its main function is lipid synthesis. So mainly the synthesis of phospholipids, uh, where um, on the smooth endoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum there are specific enzymes 
uh, and phospholipids are created that can be delivered, delivered to the plasma membrane, uh, mainly via Golgi. Apart from synthesizing phospholipids, uh, also the synthesis of cholesterol takes place here. And, and that's especially in the case of liver cells. So mm, the cholesterol is the key ingredient for all kinds of steroid hormones. Uh, and it also determines the, the membrane fluidity. So it's also important for the plasma membrane. Uh, so especially liver cells are rich in the endoplasmatic reticulum. Uh, here it helps in detoxification. So drugs get converted into a less harmful form. Uh, it, in the smooth endoplasmatic reticulum, uh, calcium ions can be also stored. So it plays an important role in, uh, um, especially in the muscles, where it's named as sarcoplasm uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum. So here, uh, I, uh, ions, calcium ions are stored. And when there is uh, a muscle contraction, the, they are released and then they're pumped back into the sarcoplasmatic reticulum, which allows the muscle to relax. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here, here are some more pictures of the endoplasma, endoplasmic, endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, so one, and here's the smooth uh, reticulum under a microscope. Okay. Yeah, maybe you can try to a little bit extend just because it's just a small pictures on the left side. Oh, you still see just the text. You still see only the text? Yeah, just only the text, no, no pictures. Just press maybe F5, F5. To open Is it working? Mm -hmm. uh, no. but it doesn't matter. It's a technical problem. It's not your fault. OK, nevertheless, I, I like it. OK, that's I think it's quite complex presentation. Uh, maybe uh, next time I would appreciate if I say one slide, I would appreciate if you really feel it. Just one slide, just a picture and put there there uh, some comments. It's not necessary to put there the text because you said everything what was written in the slide you share with us. But uh, nevertheless, the presentation was pretty nice. I am going to give you uh, two points for Ueva Bartakova for the presentation to smooth endoplasmatic reticulum. So who is ready to present now? What else? Next. So, what about Ruth's endoplasmatic reticulum? Uh, CMN, are you there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, please, moment. Okay. So, Mariam, you can send me your presentation to my email. I still didn't receive it. So I have try. already seen it. Uh, wait, I will check it again. Uh -huh. can try. Okay, Mariam, if you're ready, you can try it. So, CMN will be prepared. Okay, I will, I will try again to uh, share sure. it. Like okay, from let's do it. I'm not sure this one. No, I think it's not working. Okay, I'm gonna send it again to uh, your email if it is possible. Yes, sure. Okay, thanks. So, what about CMN? Are you ready? Or no? You need to uh, uh, Jana, can can I start the person to? presentation because I some problem to yes yeah, sure you can send it to me by email and I will share it okay so okay. what about Sunny are you ready to present 
Um, yes, ma'am. I can start. Yeah, try to share the presentation first. Um, is it like visible? Mm, not yet, but yes, now, now I see. Yes, great. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, so today we're going to talk about um, the mitochondria. So, okay. So a mitochondrion is a double membrane brown organelle found in most eukaryotic organisms. Um, it, ge it generates most of the cell supply of ATP used as a source of chemical energy. Um, it has a double membrane structure, so the single outer membrane and a folded inner membrane. The folds are called the cristae. The spaces between the cristae contain enzymes that the organelle uses to convert organic compounds to ATP, which in turn the cell uses for energy. So the outer membrane is freely permeable to small molecules and contains special channels capable of transporting large molecules. And the inner membrane is far less permeable, allowing only very small molecules to pass into the gel-like matrix that makes up the organelle's central mass. The matrix contains DNA of the mitochondrial genome and the enzymes of the uh, triboxylic um, acid, the TCA cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle, which metabolizes nutrients into byproducts and the mitochondrion can use for energy production. So the matrix is filled with water protein and proteins, and these proteins take organic molecules such as pyruvate and acetyl coenzyme A and chemically digest them. The proteins embedded in the inner membrane and the enzymes involved in the citric acid cycle ultimately release water and carbon dioxide molecules from the breakdown of oxygen and glucose. Um, the mitochondria are the only places in the cell where oxygen is reduced and eventually broken down into water. So the oh, so mitochondria are very abundant in cells that uh, require a lot of energy, for example, muscle cells. Um, they are also have their own DNA and they have their own ribosomes. Um, the DNA in the cell nucleus does not code for the construction of the mitochondria and all the mitochondria in your body comes from the mother as they give genes and cytoplasm to their children through the exons. Okay, nice presentation. I also think that's all. Or not? Oh, no, there's a lot more. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, thank you. Um, so, so the primary function of mitochondria is to convert organic minerals into cellular energy in the form of ATP. They play an important role in other metabolic tasks such as signaling, cellular differentiation, cell death, and maintaining control of the cell cycle and cell growth. Um, and also team synthesis and steroid synthesis. So heat production um, enables the organism to stay warm and um, a mutation in the genes regulating any of these functions can result in a, in a variety of mitochondrial diseases. Um, they, can they can affect almost any part of the body, including the brain, the nerves, the muscles, kidneys. Uh, ears or pancreas. The, the mitochondrial dysfunction occurs when the mitochondria doesn't work as well as they should due to another disease or condition, um, including Alzheimer's or muscular dy dystrophy. And, uh, yeah. and in conclusion, uh, the mitochondria and chloroplasts likely evolved from engulfed prokaryotes that once lived as independent organisms. At some point, the eukaryotic cell engulfed an aerobic prokaryote, which then formed an endosymbiotic relationship with the host karyot, um, gradually developing into a mitochondrion. Okay, thank you very much. It was a nice presentation. I really appreciate the technical, uh, ad technical advance of your presentation. Thank you. So, that's great. I also like that it has a structure, but uh, maybe next time uh, just to reduce the, the, the amount of text, just use some keywords and the text, you can say only the text. So that's maybe the better presentation the way, but everything was fine, everything was correct. So I would like to give you uh, okay. here, my two and half. Okay, thank you. Okay, and now I am going to share 
uh, Mariam presentation. So, Mariam, you can be ready. Just wait a second. I'll find it. Okay. So, mm -hmm. it's that one? Yes. So, so you can start. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to talk about Golgi complex. Uh, you can see the main point that I will. Uh, I'm going to talk about them. Uh, so uh, Golgi complex is a cell organelle that helps process and package proteins and lipid to be exported from the cell. And you can see on the first picture on the right side, uh, where is it located exactly? It's located right near the nucleus. And sometimes you can hear uh, or you can see it's written uh, called like perinuclear body and it's also uh, next to endoplasmatic reticulum uh, and also on the right side uh, on the left side sorry on the left side you can see that uh, Golgi complex it's similar to a stack of pancakes uh, so I put it like next next to each other so maybe you can see <laughs> how they are looks like uh, together and maybe it will be like easier for you to remember how does it look like uh, like Golgi complex but for sure, like it's without like uh, butter or honey, so you can you can remember it like that. And also in the last picture down, uh, you can say uh, you can see there are two words. Uh, they are cis and trans. Uh, the close side to endoplasmatic reticulum it's called cis, and the outside called trans. And they are very important and helping to transport uh, the vessels. And uh, I'm going to talk about why it's important. It's very important because it's like a post office. Because of that, you can see the car of uh, the picture of the of, uh, post office car behind uh, because it has the same job. Uh, Golgi receive proteins, repackage them and send them out by vessels. You can see that uh, on the same picture uh, down. Uh, it's like a green circle and this is a uh, this is our, these are the uh, vessels. So uh, it was like main information and small presentation. And thanks for attention. OK, it was nice presentation. First, I have to appreciate that you really fulfill my requirements. Just one slide. And also, it's very good that you put the structure to the slide. So what is it, where it is located, why it is important, and so on. So that's a good point. But on the other hand, you may a little bit add more information about Golgi. So it's true that we can really use the approximation that it's like a de delivery car or the post office mm -hmm. car. It's, it's a good point. But maybe I expect more information in detail, just which processes are located inside. So very important. So nevertheless, we are going to talk about Golgi in a separate lecture. If we are going to talk about proteosynthesis, so the rest of the class will really receive the information. But what, for the next time, it's nice to just focus on that from the general point of view, but some at least details mm -hmm. from mechanisms or processes which are occurred inside would be more appreciated. But nevertheless, yes, sure. so I'm going to give you two points. Mm -hmm, thank you. Maria, you are here. So. Who is ready? So I will check my email. Send me. No. OK, who is ready to share the screen? I can try sharing it. I don't know if it will work. OK, try it, please. Do you see it? Yes, great. Great. So I have the nucleus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we talked about this a lot previously, but uh, the nucleus is essentially the brain of the cell. It contains the DNA, it's the carrier of the genes um, in the cell and also controls and regulates the activities of the cell, such as growth and metabolism. Uh, it usually takes up about 10% of the cell's volume, so uh, it's quite visible when looking at the cell up close. Here on the right, you can see a diagram, uh, quite a simple one of the nucleus, but there are the main, the main parts of it highlighted. So the nucleolus, uh, this is where ribosomes are made. Uh, these ribosomes are then responsible for making proteins once they leave the nucleus. They leave the nucleus through these nuclear pores, which I'll talk about them later. 
uh, around the nucleolus, you can see chromatin, uh, these little tangled pieces of, or little strings, you can call them, uh, these are tangled pieces of DNA. And, um, and uh, once the cell is ready to divide, uh, this DNA uh, condenses into structures called chromosomes. Uh, around the chromatin, we can see the nuclear envelope. Um, this serves as a border between the nucleus and cytoplasm. It's also a protective me mechanism of the nucleolus and, and the chromatin inside. Um, the nuclear pores cell serve as some sort of a um, regulation system. Uh, it's a channel, a protein line channel, uh, through which the transportation of molecules and ribosomes takes place uh, between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. And finally here, this structure called cisterne. Um, it was probably, or should be mentioned in the presentation about the Golgi apparatus, but uh, shortly it's an integral, or plays an integral role in protein packaging and modification. I already touched upon this, but the two main uh, processes in uh, the nucleus that occur there are the DNA replication and also transcription. This is the copying of information of a DNA into a new molecule, molecule of mRNA. And uh, finally, a fun fact, uh, you probably all know this, but uh, if you were to untangle all of the pieces of DNA or the structures of DNA in each nucleus, in each cell, uh, you would get about 1.82 meters uh, of the DNA. So if you, if you multiply that by, I don't know which number, you'll get a lot of meters of DNA uh, in the entire human body. Millions of cells in the world body. Yeah, actually, if we put together all the distance, so we have approximately two meters in one in one cell, and we, if we put these two meters, two meters, and two meters, we will reach the distance from the sun to the earth. If we count together all the number of, uh, of cells in the average human body. Okay, nice presentation, Marek. I think it was the best presentation today so far. So I'm going to give you three points, just one slide, one picture, uh, well-structuralized uh, text. And I think you just cover everything important about the world. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, now I have received an uh, email from uh, Sibi. So yeah, I, I send your email. Yeah, 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 I have it. So I'm going to share it. Just I just uh, write a uh, 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 short. Yeah. So it's the, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but okay, I, I, I just look. describe myself. This is okay. uh, too simple. Yeah. Uh, today my topic is uh, love endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, the uh, the love uh, endoplasmic uh, reticulum is a subset of the uh, ER, um, uh, one is a smooth ER and one is a love ER. Um, the, the, the way to distinguish it uh, is that uh, uh, the, love, uh, the love ER is uh, continuous with the uh, nuclear envelope and uh, it is an uh, interconnected membranous structure that appear uh, uh, studied. Uh, this study uh, uh, is the ribosome attached to it. Um, yeah, and this organelle is mainly about uh, synthesis folding and the modification of proteins, especially those that need to be transported to uh, different um, organelle in the cell or uh, secreted from the cell, uh, such as proteins and other materials emerge from the um, love ER in small uh, vesicle via the gorge apparatus reserve then. Um, and uh, love ER is also involved in the cell's response and to unfolded proteins and the induced apoptosis because it interacts closely with uh, mitochondria. And that's all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Siemen. It was nice presentation. I like it. Sorry, uh, I not 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 good. I think. Yeah, uh, don't worry. Uh, I, I hear that your voice is not in very condition. Uh, I th therefore I appreciate that you did it. I had a problem today as well because I have migraine, so it's also a problem for me to speak today. So therefore, I really appreciate everyone else who has also some problems. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm going to give you two points. I think it was good presentation. Thank you. Um, and who is ready to present? So uh, Katarina. Yep, okay, I'll just try to share it right now. Uh, can you see my presentation? Give me a second. Yes, perfect. Yeah, it's your turn, Katarina. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the ribosomes. So the ribosome is a complex molecule made of ribosomal um, nucleic acid, uh, RNA, and uh, protein. Uh, there are approximately 10 million ribosomes in each of mammalian cell and humans as well. And the main purpose of ribosome is to read RNA and synthesize protein in the process named translation, which I'm going to be introducing uh, a bit later. So the structure of ribosome, we can see um, it's made up from two subunits, the large one on the top and the small one on the bottom. There are three types of ribosomes, uh, R, R RNA, which is basically the, the subunit that I was talking about, the ARM RNA, which is um, a molecule uh, carrying the codons for, as we can see here, for translation, and T RNA, which is carrying the um, amino acids uh, to synthesize um, amino acids into polypeptide chains in translation. Um, the ribosomes are th synthesized in nucleus in eukaryotic cell and also the allocation of ribosomes determines location of proteins. For example, the free floating ribosomes synthesize protein to be used within the cell, um, unlike the ones who are membrane bone bond ribosomes which end up outside of the cell. So the process of translation is um, basically a protein synthesis when mRNA, um, when it brings right amino acids together in polypeptide chains. And we can see here on the top of these little amino acids, they're following big uh, polypeptide chains with the help of um, ribosome. Okay, nice presentation. I also like it. So it was also a very good presentation. Therefore, I'm going to give you uh, three points. So Katarina, three points. So thank you very much for all thank presentations. You. I have one question. Uh, we have a new student today, as I see from from the list now. So, Omar, you are here first time. You haven't been here two previous lectures. Mm -hmm. So that's great that you are here. But I, yes, I solved the problem. Yeah, you had some problems. Don't worry, it's it's okay. But uh, we have some videos. Uh, so every lecture is recorded. So please see the videos. And now I would like to ask you. Uh, I have here one. You can see it. So here you can see a table. Here are all the names. You can see that the first lecture, all the students they have some introduction. They said, "This is my name. This is the correct presentation of my name. Uh, I am here as a student because I would like to be a physiotherapist." I hope. And because of the presentation or introduction of yourself, they receive one point. So do you want to join uh, this introduction and tell us something about you? Because you are here first time, you can get one point, which is zero points. I'm Omar, I'm here, I'm studying uh, physiotherapy. Uh, Omar, Omar, stop, 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 please. 
could you uh, maybe switch on camera just to see your face at least once? Yes, of course. I'm, I'm outside because the roommate is really noisy. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Yeah, uh, I'm in the okay. restaurant. I will, but yeah. Uh, okay. This is to me now. Hello, Omar. So, please Hello. try to introduce me. Okay, I'm uh, Omar. I'm from uh, Lebanon. I'm uh, here to study physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. And why you study physiotherapy? Well, I think physiotherapy, I like this uh, faculty. Uh, for that, I choose it. Mm -hmm. So, you would like to be a physiotherapist? Yeah. yeah. Huh. And what is your motivation to study biology course? I have no idea. I didn't understand that question. Uh, why you study biology, this course? This, why you attend this course? What do you expect from this course? To know? But, but really, yeah, in uh, physiotherapy, we need uh, everything to know about the body. We need uh, to know everything about the body, human body. You have very good conditions for study. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Omar. I'm going to give you your first point. So please thank you. try to join uh, our activities, our homework. So you may gain some extra points. So please switch off the microphone <laughs> because it's really noisy. Your, your flatmate is very noisy. Uh, thank you. So, Omar. You have very bad conditions to study, but uh, at least try to see the videos. Uh, the Moodle is now working, so I'm going to put there all the previous videos as a links. Uh, you already have the links in the Facebook group, so you may see it. And also, yes, of course, I will do. Yes. Uh, also, during our lectures, we have some mini activities, uh, for, ex for example, like this presentation. So you may receive some extra points for this presentation, for the mini test, for introduction. And I will find also some extra points because I would like to just support you during, during the semester, not just to remain everything in the end of the year, because usually it's a very, you know, very messy time. And students sometimes neglect to prepare for the test. So finally, if you neglect the preparation during the semester, you will have the final chance to pass this course just writing the test. But this, upon my experience from the previous course, students join continuously this course with these extra activities. They collect enough points to pass without the test. But nevertheless, if you are not able to do it, you can write a test, definitely. So just see the video because they are the prepositions for the, uh, for the requirements for this course. So now I'm going to uh, switch to the presentation. Uh, today, could I please ask? Uh, yes. My name is Bartakova Ela, and I came to the first lecture later because I had some connection problems. Therefore, uh, I didn't introduce myself and don't have the, the one introduction point. Is okay, there a possibility to, to yes. gain? Yes, sure, Eva, what? please. OK. I just, <laughs> yeah, I see it. You don't have the points. Sorry. Uh, OK, Eva, welcome here. Please do your <laughs> introduction. Just tell me, Eva, it's your name. Why you study for the uh, Why you study? physiotherapy or what you study and why you join this course. This is what is important for you. Mm -hmm. So my name is Eva Bartakova. Uh, I'm, I'm studying physiotherapy because uh, I enjoy well, learning about movement and the human body. Uh, and uh, I, biology is, of course, a mm, crucial part of learning about how how the body works, uh, what what's the what are the structures, um, so that's why I think it's important. And you are from the Czech Republic, yeah? Yes, I'm from the Czech Republic. So why you study in English? <laughs> well, I signed up quite late, uh, so it was one of the few options, uh, and. Um, 
Uh, I also studied at different English schools, so it was sort of going in the same direction. I, I went to an international school. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's logical. So thank you for introduction. So everyone who introduced receive one point. So also Eva. And now we can go to plasma membrane. Okay, we have something like one hour or less than one hour. So I think it's enough. So please, could you see the presentation? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, I think plasma membrane is very important basic for all organelles. Maybe if you prepare your presentations, you realize that uh, usually the many organelles, they have plasma membrane or membrane, or at least one, usually sometimes two, or it's a system of vesicles or cisternase and one. So let's talk about, about the plasma membrane structure. First of all, uh, about some basic or general structure. So the basic structure of all membranes, plasma membrane included, is the phospholipids. Phospholipids are created from two uh, physiochemical different parts. I would like this pointer. So this part, this upper part, it's a hydrophilic. So it means it lacks water. It carries a charge. So it's logical because water, as we know from previous presentation, it's also charged because there is, a, there is oxygen, which carries also free electron pairs and also uh, hydrogen, which carries the vacant orbitals. So in principle, there is the constitution of the positive as well as negative charge. The same is known for the phospholipid. So this, this phospho part uh, carries both charges, the positive one as well as the negative one, and therefore it, it behaves like it's heterion. So it carries both charges and it can be polarized, this part. This is one point. The second point is that because of its charge, it, uh, it can be it's soluble in water, so it can interact with water ambient. So therefore it's logical. Inside the cell we have water, outside the cell we have water. So that's the reason that the presence of this hydrophilic hat uh, really allows to phospholipids to orientate in the water ambient by this way. So this part, maybe I can change the color. Okay, the blue one. So this part, which is now marked by a blue color, it's a hydrophobic tail. So it means that really it dislikes water. It's uh, it's logical because it's fatty acids. So if you have an oil, something fatty, some lipids, and just put a drop into the water, so you cannot really dissolve it. It's something which dislike water, and therefore we are talking about hydrophobicity of this part of the molecule. So there is only few ways how to orient these molecules in water ambient. The first one is micelle. So here you can see a micelle. So it means that these hydrophobic tails, the fatty acid tails, they are oriented together and on the, and the surface, which is in interaction with water ambient, is created by this hydrophilic hat. Uh, the second way is haliposome. It's double layer structure, which uh, actually creates the inner space in the inside liposome, which can uh, surround some water friendly molecules, usually it's water or some proteins which can be dissolved in water. And also the upper part is created again with hydrophilic hats. So uh, the structure which is uh, applied in liposome is this bilayer sheet. So you can see that we have these white or blue dots, hydrophilic. Uh, phospholip phospholipids or the hydrophilic hats, which are oriented towards to the water, and the hydrophobic tails, which simply are they are grouped together because uh, 
fat goes to fat and water goes to the water. Just remember this simple rule. Only this orientation allows to just to minimize the inner energy of the system and therefore this system is pretty stable. So this is the basic structure for plasma membrane. Here you can see maybe a little bit detail. So again, the phospholipid pads, hydrophobic tails oriented together. They create the hydrophobic inner space and therefore they communicate with water, which is outside as well as inside the cell or inside some vesicle, of course, or organelle. Which membrane lipids are present in general in plasma membranes? In plants, we can find glycerolipids. In phospholipids, uh, in animals, we mostly find phospholipids. These are very important for us. Uh, also, again, in plants or in some photosynthetic active bacteria, we can find some glycerogalactolipids. In our body, in animals, we can find sphingolipids. They predeterminate uh, the differences, for example, in blood groups. In archaebacteria, we can find isoprenoids, and in animals, we can find steroid, uh, steroids like cholesterol. So these three groups are very important for animals, and especially for humans, so phospholipids sphingolipids and steroids. So let's focus a little bit to phospholipids. What is the structure of phospholipid? Uh, in the first slide, I show you that there are two parts. There's a hydro, a hydrophilic, hydrophobic, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So this one and this one. Uh, let's see the basic structure. Maybe I will change the color of the pointer again. It's not easy today. Okay. So the basic structure of phospholipid is uh, glycerol. It's three carbon structure, C, C, and C. So if you have printed the, the handouts, you can draw inside or just uh, take a blank sheet of paper and please try to draw it. Because it's very important, if you just put it into your hand, you will remember it. So glycerol, it's three carbon structure. It contains three hydroxyl groups, three. So, and also I have to add some hydrogens. So this one, and this one, and this one, okay. So this is the st this structure. Okay. Uh, by the reaction, okay, again, change the color. Uh, the interaction with fatty acids. So how it looks like fatty acids? So C O O H, it's carboxylic group. And then continues the CC chain. So it's this C1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So by this way, of course, I have to add some hydrogen to, 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 um, etc. So they are, they are pretty long. Usually 16 or 17, 20, 22. This is the usual numbers of the longness of these uh, fatty acid chains. It's very important that these parts are dissoluble in water. They are hydrophobic. So by the esterification of these two groups, so this hydrogen goes outside and OH group goes outside to release water. So esterification, H2O, so it's not easy to write with mouse, sorry, it's H2O, it's water. So uh, by the esterification, we occupied these two hydroxyl groups, so these two, this one and this one, and we just put there the fatty acid chain. What remains 
it's this carbon, this one remains free for the interaction with the phosphate group. So with yeah, the phosphate group here. So here we will put the phosphate group. So let's focus on this part. Maybe I will. Okay, uh, is it still clear uh, or visible what is written in this slide or not? Are you able to recognize this part? Yes. Okay, so this is the phosphate group. Is, is it actually the residue from the autophosphoric acid? And here is the azit or amine group, which carries the particle of positive charge. So here is the positive charge. And here is also the negative charge. So therefore, we call this uh, pair of the positive and the negative charge like cvitrion. 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 So oh, it's very important to, uh, to have this cvitrionic character. Twitter, you are. Uh, it's a word from Germany, German, so, uh, but it's commonly used in Czech and English. In Middle East. Actually, it's quite too hard to translate it. It means that it's a particle which carries the charges. And it's very important that we have this particle in, or part of the molecule in the membrane, because as you know, probably that membranes, it's polarized, so it means that there is a different charge inside and outside the membrane. Uh, next time we are going to calculate also the plasma membrane potential and also the changes which is related with plasma membrane spiking or excitation. So that's this is the aim for next lectures, just to understand what happened in plasma membrane. And now we are moving to spingo lipids. Uh, they also, so the structure is pretty similar to phospholipids, so they also contain fatty acid tails and there is also some hat which carries a charge. And the polar group in this point or in this lipids is created by the lysolides. Usually it's sialic acid, as you see in this picture. Um, this uh, sialic acid, uh, it's a part of the signalization system, which is uh, present in our uh, red blood cells, for example. It's just one part of the signalization system. Uh, this uh, signalization created by the oligosaccharides, it's used for the addressing of cells. It's just uh, information for, uh, for example, leukocytes, uh, about the identity of every cell. So uh, it says that this is the IP address of my cell if there are the signatures which are referring to the ownership of all cells. So this is the basic approach for uh, all signalization which is done by oligosaccharides. This signalization is done by the combination of these sugars. Usually there are some uh, from 2 to 12 uh, monosaccharide units, so oligosaccharides. They are not so long. And this is very important and very interesting part, uh, isoprenoids. You may see that really the structure is quite similar to fatty acids. You may see that in fatty acid we have the CCCC. Usually if you have just the, this long uh, olig um, long aliphatic chain, so aliphatic chain means that we have a C, C, C and C and it continues. And we usually uh, just simplify it by this zigzag line. So this is just a simplification for carboxylic fatty acids. So C, O, O, H. Yeah, and long aliphatic carbon chain. This is pretty same for isoprenoids, but there is a little difference. And the difference is this methyl group. 
this little tail which goes to the space uh, really is important for the bigger stability of isoprenoids. So this is the uh, methyl group, so methyl group C, H, three, if you are not familiar with, with uh, biochemistry. And here we have the basic structure, so glycerol again, and these two isoprenoids instead of fatty acid. And this part is again created from charged parts. In this point, it's some sugars. Isoprenoids, they are not present in humans. They are present usually in archaeobacteria. Uh, however, they are very important for some new technologies because, as we know, that bacteria or archaeobacteria, actually, they are able to live in some extreme conditions, in high pressures, high temperatures, for example. And the reason that they can do it is that they have the plasma membrane structure, these isoprenoid structures. Therefore, researchers are focusing on the isoprenoids and they are trying to mimic them to develop some materials which can be very uh, useful uh, or very stable in high temperatures uh, or at high, high pressures. So that's the important, that's the, the, the main point of this slide. Uh, also, it's very from the biological point of view, it's very important or interesting how the steroids uh, are developed. Because isoprenoids, the, the main structure is isoprenoid structure. It's the five carbon structure, which is repeated and repetitively uh, repeated in the structure, in the chain. And they have the same evolution, isoprenoids, with steroids. Steroids, as you know, are hormones like uh, testosterone, progesterone, and also cholesterol. Cholesterol is a very important part of the plasma membrane structure, and uh, therefore we will put or pay attention a little bit to the biological evolution of steroids. So here we have the basic structure, is the squalene chain. So here you can see that the five carbon unit is repetitively uh, repeated in the chain. Uh, then because of the UV radiation, uh, this chain became uh, more plastic and became cyclized. So we are going to have a squalene precursor, so that one. So this is the first point, this is the point. Actually, this is not just the one step reaction, it goes step by step. That this is just a simplified skin. As well as here, this red line uh, symbolizes many, many reactions, bio, many biosynthetic intermediates. However, we have two ways in the nature. Uh, maybe you remember that I taught you in the first lecture or in the second lecture that uh, at the beginning, once life was created in our Earth, there are no oxygen. So therefore, the first pathway is uh, going without oxygen. So if we uh, have this, this substrate, the same structure, and we change it without oxygen, we will receive this structure. We are talking about hopanoid structure. Here you can see that we have five cycles, these one, two, three, four, five cycles. If we uh, have uh, oxygen in, in the reaction, we will receive a little bit different structure. Maybe you know this structure. Uh, it's the cyclopentanoperhydroxyphenantanin structure. This is just a four uh, circle structure, and this is cholesterol structure. So, from the same precursor, two different pathways without oxygen and with oxygen, and we will receive something different. But this is important, this is cholesterol. Right, cholesterol, like this. So, is it clear? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, these structures, again, they are on a very detailed focus of scientists. They are not present in humans. 
Uh, however, they are present in bacteria. Uh, they make uh, bacteria more stable. So, step, um, plasma membrane of bacteria is stable because of the presence of isoprenoids and also of these hopanoids, which has the similarity or, or parallel in cholesterol or sterile structures in general. So this, this is not important to remember these structures, of course. These are, these are here just for, for some illustration, how it can be, how it looks like. Now we are getting to cholesterol. So this is very famous and very important steroid uh, in our cells. We need cholesterol. Without cholesterol, our plasma membrane is not stable at all. Uh, so two thirds of plasma membrane is created by phospholipids, one third by cholesterol. And also there are some proteins and sugars, of course, like channels, transporters, and so on. <clears throat> but maybe you just, uh, if you follow some uh, medical articles or some people which are writing in internet something about good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, so uh, I would like to clarify it a little bit. So we have just one molecule of cholesterol. We don't have 10 types of cholesterol. It's just this structure. However, uh, as you know, uh, it's a lipid. Uh, it's steroid lipid. And therefore, like lipid, it's not soluble in water. Therefore, our body uses some... Uh, I have some simulation from next lecture. It doesn't matter. Uh, Okay, what we would like to say. Yes, uh, we have just this structure and in our body, we, if we would like to transport cholesterol from place one to place B, we need to wrap it somehow because this is absolutely insoluble in water. And you know, blood is water. And uh, therefore this particle cannot be absolutely uh, dissolved in, in blood. Therefore we use some wrapping this one, some packaging. So the first point is that the molecules of cholesterol is put it together. So we are not wrapping only one molecule. It's just a conglomerate of these cholesterol molecules together. And what is wrapping them, it's a wrap from proteins. These proteins are soluble in water. If the wrapping is perfect, practically no part of the cholesterol is looking outside the wrap, we are talking about the good cholesterol. This cholesterol goes smoothly via the arteries in our bloodstream. However, if the wrapping is not perfect and some parts of the cholesterol are really emerging from the wrap, uh, we are talking about bad cholesterol in general. And this cholesterol really has the tendency to create plaques in arteries, and that's the reason that the arteries became narrow, narrow, and we are talking about atherosclerosis. So the difference between bad and good cholesterol is in the way of wrapping. So good wrapped or well wrapped cholesterol is the good one, but not perfectly wrapped cholesterol. We have a scale of not well wrapping, so therefore we have very bad cholesterol or medium cholesterol, something like that. This is not important in this point. But please understand to one point, if the cholesterol, which is not soluble in water, in blood, is not well wrapped, it really may damage your body. There are two reasons why cholesterol is not well wrapped in our body. The first one is that simply the cholesterol which we have in our body is the content, the amount of the cholesterol is too high. Therefore, we don't have enough paper, enough proteins to wrap it perfectly. So we are, we are cutting smaller pieces of the wrap and we are trying to pack uh, the same amount or some same drops of cholesterol. That's the reason that the wrapping is not perfect. Mm. The second point is that our proteins, which are uh, important for the wrapping of cholesterol that they are not well synthesized. It's related with some uh, biochemical damage of our proteosynthesis of these proteins. 
So this is the two main ways. Too high content of cholesterol, so we don't have enough wrap for the wrapping of cholesterol. And the second point, some uh, genetically determined diseases which doesn't allow to synthesize enough proteins for the wrapping of cholesterol. One point is that in our liver uh, is synthesized every day one gram of cholesterol. So one gram of cholesterol. So definitely we need some cholesterol. So we cannot avoid. Without cholesterol, our plasma membrane decayed completely. And maybe you can tell me, uh, you know, that there were a problem maybe in the 90s. Usually there were some very big uh, campaign against to eat egg yolk because it contains a high amount of uh, cholesterol. Do you know how much cholesterol is contained in one average egg yolk? So approximately in one egg, I'm not sure if I can I can maybe type it. I can type it like this. Be better. So in one egg yolk. There is 0 0.3 milligrams. Oh, no, not grams. So approximately, if we eat three eggs a day, we just uh, have this, just cover the supply of cholesterol which comes from our liver. So three eggs a day, but I think usually we don't eat three eggs a day or egg yolk a day, uh, but just don't be hysteric from eggs. I think they contain many important nutrition, not only cholesterol, but uh, actually we need cholesterol. So as I mentioned, you know, the normal value of cholesterol in our blood, I mean the total cholesterol, do you know it? Isn't it like over 100 milligrams, around 200? I don't, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So uh, physiological, uh, physiologically, uh, normally in the adult population, we the the range is 3.5 to 5.5 mol millimole per liters, millimole per liters, millimole per liter. So millimole, uh, it's just the different unit of the amount. We are talking about grams, milligrams, moles, millimoles. So, uh, you know, uh, the recalculation from grams to moles goes via the molecular weight of the molecule. So, molecular weight of cholesterol is something more than 300. And therefore, we can also use it uh, milligrams per liter, but usually it's used millimoles per liter of blood. So, 3.5 to 5.5 mole per liter, millimole per liter, sorry. So this is the normal value in our blood. If the content is higher, it's a problem because uh, we really don't have enough wrap for, for, for the transport of cholesterol. So therefore, atherosclerosis can be really occurred. And we are talking about the uh, low density uh, lipoprotein. So low density lipoprotein, so mean we don't have enough wrap to package the cholesterol. If we have enough, we are talking about high density lipoprotein, so the good one. Uh, however, it's also a problem to have a smaller amount, that's 3.5. The border is 3 millimole per liter. And uh, because uh, cholesterol is very important for our cognitive functions, uh, very low, if we have too low value of cholesterol in our blood, uh, we really increase the risk of Alzheimer's diseases or some dementia development. 
it's very it's confirmed by several years clinical studies. Uh, for example, are used or uh, yeah, yeah, I'm back. Okay, statins are the medicals which are used for the correction of the amount in the in, of cholesterol in, the, in our body, so it uh, really inhibit the enzymes which are responsible for the biosynthesis of cholesterol in our liver, particularly. And however, if uh, the amount of uh, cholesterol drop under the limit, which is around three uh, millimole per liter, we are in the risk of the higher development or faster development of dementia or Alzheimer's diseases. So questions to this point. I think this is very crucial point, not only for this subject. We know that we have cholesterol just as a one molecule and the difference between the high density and low density lipoprotein are good one and the bad one cholesterol is not in cholesterol molecule. It depends on the wrapping of cholesterol. Is it clear this point? Who doesn't understand? Just ask me. Okay, it's clear. Fine. So let's move to main brain damages. I just briefly talk about that isoprenoids and these structures make the membrane more stable. So the big biggest enemies for the membranes are the low and high temperatures. So uh, also uh, high pressures and uh, amphipathic compounds, some detergents because they dissolve, uh, decompose and dissolve uh, the fatty acids inside the membrane. So why low temperatures? So it's natural that high temperatures, so you can imagine that uh, high temperatures may really uh, induce the carboxylation and decomposition of the plasma membrane, but why low temperatures? Uh, so it depends how looks the fatty acids in the so I mentioned that phospholipid, they are created from fatty acids and the phospholipid of orthophosphoric acid, the, the charged hydrophilic hat. So let's focus now on the fatty acid chain. So you saw that there are some, maybe I can show you picture back. So this part, so this part, uh, here you can see that there are only the single bonds. Yeah? We are talking about saturated fatty acids. However, if you have there these double bonds, you are talking about unsaturated, uh, unsaturated fatty acid. If there is a higher amount of these double bonds, so it means that the structure of the fatty acid is not really linear. It's not just this zigzag snake. However, it's more spacey. It's more 3D structure. And if there, there are more uh, these double, double bonds, we can say that the plasma membrane will be more stable in uh, low temperatures. Yeah. Simply because they have lower freezing point. You know that if we have a butter as a, as a fat, which is an animal fat, which is created with saturated fatty acids, and if we have, for example, sunflower oil, which comes from plants, so this oil is rich to unsaturated fatty acids. So in normal temperature, butter is solid. However, sunflower oil, uh, it's liquid. So it's about the freezing point. Amphipathic compounds, so detergents. So simply detergents, they really, uh, disrupt the structure of plasma membrane because they interact with the fatty acid chain again and th therefore the, the plasma membrane became decomposed. And high pressure, so it's easy because something if it is smashed together it also from the physical point of view became decomposed. 
And I also mentioned that if plasma membrane contains isoprenoids and opanoids, it's more stable as it is in archaeobacteria. Therefore, they can really live in, under the water, they can live in uh, high uh, temperatures also, and therefore, the plasma membrane is quite stable. We don't have these copanoids, we don't have isoprenoids in plasma membrane, therefore, the razor which can, uh, can be can be bare by our plasma membrane is limited. So, a uh, little overview of mitochondria because it has two membranes the outer membrane and the inner membrane. We have a pretty nice presentation from uh, Mariam, I think. No, from Sunny, from Sunny, sorry. From Sunny. Uh, so, she uh, introduced many things and mentioned many things. Just please remember that mitochondria is important. Uh, for the py pyruvate oxidation, also for beta oxidation of fatty acid because it's a part of the citric cycle. And also, finally, uh, in mitochondria, it produced ATP uh, by the oxidative way. So, uh, it's uh, mitochondria is the place where the oxidation, uh, the cellular oxidation, is occurring. It's actually the cellular lungs of Every cell, every cell, it's cell lungs. So this is the main uh, processes which are occurring in mitochondria. Uh, you will know more from uh, biochemistry. So uh, this is just uh, some brief information, some additional information. I think it's not necessary because every mention, every important was mentioned here, and this is also here. I have also one video about. The, Transporters, which are related with the oxidative phosphorylation, so the cerebral breathing. I am going to show it to you after the presentation, and that's it for today from the presentation. Questions? Okay. If you don't have, if you don't have questions, Recording.